Hey, I'm really excited because I just got back from the reptile slash plant expo in Mississauga. Uh, I think it's November 26th today, and I don't know how long it'll take me to actually edit this video, so you'll probably be watching it later, but they do have this expo multiple times a year, so if you want to go, I will like leave a link to check out the website. I've always been into reptiles and amphibians and stuff, so I love going to these expos and just recently they've added on the plant expo portion. So there's even more options when it comes to like plants and stuff. So it's like all my favorite things in one place. And it's just like one of my favorite things to go to. This was one of the smaller ones. There have been larger ones, but it just happened to work out with my schedule that I could go today. So I'm really happy. I'm going to show you what I got. Not a ton of stuff, but I think the stuff I did get is pretty cool at this point. You know, I've seen a lot of stuff for, so for me to find something I've never been able to find before is, is like very exciting. So definitely some wish list plans that I was able to check off today. That's, that's really cool. So I'm just going to pull stuff out in like, uh, no particular order. Yeah, let's get to it. Okay. Uh, in this bag. So this is begonia chlorostica red form. You might've seen this on my, what was that video even called? Like wishlist plants I've checked off or something or wishlist review. Maybe, maybe that was it. Um, so yes, I did have a chlorostica red form already, but the problem was that, well, it died. Sometimes begonias like to just rot because that's just what they do. Like begonias are so finicky and annoying like that. Anyways, mine died, but this very beautiful cutting was available. Um, I have to see how rooted it is. My plan was to like pot it up right away into um, the magic mineral mix from Crystal Star Nursery in a self-watering pot. I think I'm gonna do that like right now. I just wanna see how rooted this guy is. River, you causing trouble? River's in one of my pots. He likes the, I use orchid bark, at least I used to in my mixes and he really likes chewing on the orchid bark. So he's found one of my alocasias that has the bark and he's chewing it up and leaving a big mess on the floor. Thanks River. Okay, it has some roots. So it's not like a fresh, fresh cutting or anything. Some of the stem is like, I don't know if you can see that it's dark, but I don't think that's rot. I mean, the plant looks really, really healthy. So I'm just gonna like mostly leave that alone and just pot it up. I won't like bore you with this part um, too much. I'm just putting some mesh for this bottom of the self-watering pot. I really like using self-watering pots for my begonias because they like a lot of water. If you let them dry out, they're not happy. And this allows me to keep some begonias anyways in room conditions. And I'm feeling like I might try this particular cutting in room conditions since it seems to be rotting in my like normal conditions. It's like pretty common to root begonias in moss, but like um, I'd rather not use moss because it's like impossible to get them out of. All right, see, isn't she cute? One of my favorite begonias. Um, this is I think the third one actually that I've ever bought. So, but this is probably the nicest, biggest one. I'm, I'm, I still love it just as much as the first time. Okay, next up. I'll put this one up to the camera, see if that focuses. See that really pretty pinkish veining on there? Isn't that just like so nice? Um, hear the name, a Anoectochilus, Anoectochilus tridentatu. Uh, uh, I'll put the name on the screen, but isn't that just like so pretty? I think I've killed pretty much all of my jewel orchids. Um, I was kind of hoping to find a uh, Makoti's um, Patola, if that's how you say it, the lightning jewel orchid. I didn't find anyone that's like the classic one, um, but this one is pretty cool. I'm I'm not, not mad about that. Hopefully I don't kill this one. I think I'm not gonna put it into a high um, humidity environment. I think that's kind of the mistake that I've made before, like just giving them too much humidity and then they rot. But yeah, really happy about that guy. Here's another jewel orchid I got from the same shop, which I believe was Tails and Scales. Um, this one didn't have an ID on it, but I'm pretty sure this one is uh, also 
Aenoectochileus, the same um, genus anyways. I feel like this one was called like gold something. Like I feel like I've seen it before and they've come down in price. This one has very, very prominent veining. This one is really cool and it wasn't, wasn't that expensive, I don't think. It was also around like $20. I'm really happy with that guy. Again, hope I don't kill it. Another one I got from that shop. This is technically one I've bought before, but my like my Bavarian wasn't doing very well for a while, and um, this one kind of mostly died on me. But this is just kind of like a staple terrarium plant. Um, Ficus River. What, what you doing, man? What you doing? River. River, come here. River, come here. He's so dumb. So yeah, Ficus pumilla, I think. Minima. Um, no, sorry, this is not minima. This is quercifolia. Uh, so also known as like oak leaf fig, I think. It's a staple terrarium plant. Like the little leaves have so much dimension and they stay nice and small. I'm just gonna use this to take cuttings from and put in my uh, frog tank. Next, let's do some succulents. This is from Plant It Succulent. Uh, one of my favorite places to get conophytums. So, oh, this one got a little bit smushed. That's my fault because of how I was transporting it around. But this is a really cool, kind of like a codic plant. I actually have no idea what the ID is. I'm gonna have to message her and, uh, and see, but it's got like these really cool fuzzy leaves if it'll focus. This one is kind of on the side is broken just because it's probably been rolling around in the car. It's a very just interesting, succulent. I obviously, I don't know what it is, but I think it would just look like so cool in a really like rustic looking pot. But I kind of like those fuzzy, fuzzy little leaves. Um, I think I'm gonna pot this one up right away too, just cause I have a few pots and she generally sells her stuff like bare root anyways. So they usually, they usually do need to be planted up. See, isn't that cute? Stay tuned for updates on that one. I'll probably move it to a different pot eventually, but this is just the only one I have that's like kind of the right size, so stay tuned. Um, I also got from her, they kind of spilled, um, but I got a couple, these are, um, I, I'm gonna have to hold them up so you can actually see them. These are Conophytum um, Bergerii. They very much just look like gumdrops, which I like absolutely love. I had some, but then I ended up killing them in an attempt to get rid of mealybugs, which I'm, you know, not uh, super proud of, but it happens sometimes. I'm gonna pot these guys up too. I have just like this little teeny tiny pot. I forget what I had there in there before. See, look how cute they are. They're not like super secure in the pot. Um, right at this moment because they're not rooted, but in a little while they'll they'll root just fine. And I am using the Mineral Magic Mix for from Crystal Star Nursery for these as well. Like I find it works really well for succulents. It doesn't have perlite in it, so it doesn't like look, you know, super ugly. That's the problem with succulents when you have like a high concentration of perlite in your mix. It's just, it ends up looking really bad on top, but this looks okay even if you don't put a top dressing on it. So hopefully these guys will root and do okay. Uh, the next thing I got, this is, um, this is not a plant. This is from Mui Boutique. And she makes the most beautiful jewelry. I will link the shop in the description. These are the most beautiful little clay earrings in the most pretty yellow color. I absolutely love this kind of um, yellow color. Show you, show you up close. I already have a few pieces of jewelry from her, so I, am, I absolutely love love her stuff. It's very just cute and classic in my opinion. Okay, next, this is one I'm like super, super excited about because it's been like low key on my wish list for a long, long time and I've never really seen one for sale. And they had them there today and it was like not even that expensive. It's like only $15, which is just amazing. Okay, so you may recognize what this is. Some people call it like um, the butterfly plant. I feel like in some places it must be more available, but I just, I haven't seen them. I feel like maybe they were popular 
on social media like a couple years ago and then they kind of, I don't know if they've gone out of popularity or what, but I just have not seen them, especially in Canada. It's kind of just like a, oh, it is a bit weedy the way it grows, but I think if you can like, you could train it on a trellis. Oh, it'd just be like so cute and dainty and I, I just love it. My husband said it reminds him of a bogonia, but I don't really see the resemblance. So this is Christia obcordata. So also known as a swallowtail butterfly plant. Again, stay tuned for updates on this one because I feel like as it starts to fill out more, it's just gonna get cuter and cuter. Okay, next, I did get some isopods uh, and also some feeder insects <laughs> while I was at the expo. So if you don't like bugs, I'll give you the timestamp. Feel free to like jump ahead and then we'll get back to plants. But I also really like isopods and that kind of thing. So very excited and might as well show you. Cause I know some of you like that kind of thing too. These are some very, very cool isopods. Now, hopefully you're gonna be able to see them. So these are armadillium or is it armadil, armadildium klugii Montenegro. These are really, really cool. I have some armadilli, armad, armadildium uh, gestroi and I really, really like those and these guys are like kind of similar. Super cool in my opinion. If you wanna see a video of just all the isopods in my collection, let me know because I can totally, totally do that. My sister is also into isopods, so I'm actually gonna, um, oh, don't fall out. I'm actually gonna split this uh, colony with her, so probably one of us will keep it until we get some babies, or if it's big enough, if there's enough, we might split it, but yeah, those are, those are a really, really cool addition. Okay, what else did I get? I have some fruit fly food for my uh, fruit fly cultures for my poison dart frogs. Um, I have a fruit fly culture for my poison dart frogs to introduce some new members to the gene pool. And I'm just showing you this because this is the reality if you ever want to get into having a terrarium with poison dart frogs, you're going to be making these. I got some mealworms for Korok, the gecko. I did get some creamsicle isopods as well. These ones are for um, fusion reptiles. I will try and link their shop if they have them. Oh, look, these guys are cute. Aw, they're very cute. Okay, I don't know how well I'll be able to show you. I'll have to look up the actual like species names for these guys. Uh, they ri remind me a lot of just like powder orange isopods, but instead of being all orange, they kind of have like white and they have white um, antennae if that's, they might not actually be antennae, I'm not sure. Cause they're actually really, really cute. They're not very expensive either. They were like $30 for, for all of these guys. I, yeah, I'm really happy with those. Isopods are just like such easy, you know, if you want like the easiest pet on the planet, it's an, it's an isopod, like they're detrivores. They eat leaf litter and you can just kind of leave them and let them do their thing. You can also get some of the more prolific isopods like uh, dairy cows or just the wild type isopods oh come back that are less expensive for being like a cleanup crew in a bioactive terrarium or something like that um but i do actually keep these guys as as pets because they're cool it's cool to watch them breed and do all that stuff anyways i think i think i think it's cool okay back to plants and last bag i believe all of these last ones are from um, understory enterprises that they always have really really cool terrarium plants i've gotten lots of stuff for my terrariums from them they also have dart frogs and that kind of thing and they've um, been doing this a long time they have just some really really cool stuff i'll save the best one the one that i'm most excited about for last though so i got a couple um mark gravia species so this one is um Umbella red slash pink. Pick them up so I can actually show you. So I, I assume they're called red slash pink. That's just the um, cultivar name or whatever because the new growth comes in a bit more pink than the normal version. Um, Margravia are really cool creeping plants. I just, I have a really bad track record with them. All of, all of mine have like died. So these are 
um, <laughs> replacements of one of ones I've had in the past. Uh, just really, really, really cool terrarium plants. I also got another Margravia. This one really comes in nice and red. This is definitely one that I've had before. I might still have like a leaf of it uh, still, I'm not sure. But, oh, just look at that beautiful color, that beautiful color gradient from like red to yellow to green. These guys are just, they're just beautiful. And just like creeping along a mossy piece of cork or something. Like that's just so cool. I would have a whole terrarium just to have these. Like I said, I haven't been super great at growing them because it seems like the leaves don't do well if they get like super wet, if they get misted on directly. So I still have to find a place where they really like thrive, but they're just so cool. I want to keep, you know, I want to keep trying. <laughs> and this, so this species is just called, well, I don't think it's a species. It's just Highland was the identifier. Next, I have a really cool epiphytic fern. I have another couple epiphytic ferns already, but this one is a little bit different. It's very reptilian. Aren't those leaves just like the coolest? Like that veining is so, so interesting. And the leaves are like long and thin. I really love this. So this is apparently, I think it's Microgramma lyco lycopodoides. So Microgramma lycopodoides from Ecuador. So definitely not a common one. I haven't seen this one before. So you can see kind of like if you've ever grown a rabbit's foot fern, you can see how it kind of grows along this rhizome and it's kind of fuzzy like a, like a rabbit's foot fern would be. But obviously the foliage is like very different. And these guys tend to do very well in my vivarium, um, at least the other microgramma species that I have. They, they are fairly resilient. So I'm very excited about, about that guy. So you can see all of these are like new um, shoots basically where there'll be even more growth coming from. So he's a very cool one. And they're always like nicely packaged um, like this in plastic containers so they don't like dry out. Terrarium plants, if they're even out for like just a while, they, they can get kind of sad. You can see even this begonia has gotten like kind of limp from the time we potted it up. That's normal with terrarium plants. They, they need the high humidity. Okay, so last but not least, this might actually be my favorite find from the whole day. It wasn't like expensive or anything. I've just been looking for one for a very, very long time. Apparently, when I was talking to the shop, they had, they brought four and I got the last one and I was there within like an hour of opening. So they're definitely um, popular. I think a lot of people are looking for them. So they tend to sell out when they're available. Anyways, super excited. I'm gonna show you this guy. You might know what this is. This is Biophytum sensitivum. It's very popular in the terrarium trade because it literally looks like a mini palm tree. It gives that like perfect miniature tree vibe. It's even better because it has all the, um, I don't know if this is moss or something um, related growing on the top, but doesn't it look just like a perfect little scene just as it is? I love this one, so pretty. So yeah, not like super fancy or anything, but I've been looking for one for so long and I am super, super happy to, to finally have one. I have a different type of biophytum, like memorantum or something that I think was in my wish list video. But this one is um, kind of the OG one, I guess. So I think having both, like having both of them together will be really cool. My other one also has root mealy bugs right now, so. I'm hoping it'll survive. I just have to kind of keep these separate so this one doesn't get me root mealy bugs. I was kind of hesitant to buy any terrarium plants for a time because a lot of my terrarium plants ended up getting root mealy bugs and I've kind of been um, fighting with it. I did just do a reel on how I like treat root mealy bugs using hot water. That's been pretty effective. But terrarium plants are really, really sensitive. So sometimes even if you do that, they they don't, necessarily respond super well to it but now a lot of plants are like recovering and i'm feeling more comfortable introducing things into my vivarium again so yeah that's uh that is it that's all the stuff i got from the reptile expo 
this time not a huge haul but I'm I'm super excited with uh, with what I got definitely a few gems that I've never been able to get my hands on before so I am I'm quite happy that I went it'll probably be a little bit before I get to another one so I should do a quick shout out this shirt is from um, Crystal Star Nursery I'll show you the back because the design is like uh, super cool if you can see I didn't really like think this through um, they were also there at the expo. I didn't end up getting anything this time because I'm on their online shop constantly. <laughs> but I just wanted to give them a shout out because that's where I get my substrate that I use for my self-watering pots and stuff. Um, it's absolutely my favorite and if you like orchids and Hoyas and stuff, they're definitely the people. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see more haul videos like this. It's not too often that I get like so many plants at one time. Let me know if you keep any reptiles or that kind of thing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.